everybody. I have the difficult task of bringing God's word to you. I've never found it easy to do this. I've never, never found it easy. That's, I don't think the Apostle Paul never found it easy. He says he, he came with fear and much trembling <laughs> when he was proclaiming the gospel. And uh, I do admire preachers who can get up there and you can just see that they are comfortable. Uh, but nevertheless, we, we have this word uh, which is precious. And uh, many people will not be gathered in church this morning. They will be doing their own thing and uh, not remembering that Christ is risen. And in that we can say hallelujah. 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 Christ hallelujah. is risen. Yeah, you can say it more than once if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> um, wonderful thing. But thank you for coming. Thank you for uh, sharing with us uh, this morning. Um, if you... Last week I was preaching at Oat Hall. Uh, I always get on well there because there's only two of them. <laughs> two people and uh, I, I feel there's a great need there so w uh, w when they shout I go um, um, I'm always willing to help them out having known them for quite a few years but bless the two ladies there they keep the church going and that's a wonderful thing and it's a part of the Countess of Huntington's work uh, which Gordon, of course, is um, uh, uh, with. He, he is involved with uh, Gordon Hamilton. Is involved, involved with that. So that's uh, that's good. He's the connection there. And um, yeah, we've seen it dwindle down over the years. Uh, people have died, and they were hoping that some. Uh, they were hoping that there, there was a little group of people that came in there one day, and they were really hoping. Uh, that they would be willing to be part of uh, that little chapel. But you know what the problem is? Because people like to be in a crowd, don't they? And they don't like to stick their heads out and um, above the parapet. Um, trouble is when you stick your heads above the parapet, the parapet or the trench, I always call it, you get shot at. And that, that can be difficult. That can be difficult. It's always that. We, we're in a, it's a warfare that we're in. It, it, you know, we're soldiers uh, of the cross. And um, yes, we're very likely to. <laughs> Welcome. Lovely to see you, John and Teresa. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being with us this morning. Right, well, let's start off with I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene.
Said it all. <laughs> said it all. It's all been said. How marvelous, how wonderful. Let's pray, shall we? Heavenly Father, we thank you once again that we are gathered this morning in your presence. We thank you that, Lord, you've given us a measure of health and strength uh, to come this morning and a desire to hear your word and to be with the uh, uh, and have fellowship with one another. We thank you, Lord, that this day is a good day. We thank you that we can remember, Lord, that Jesus rose again from the dead. The grave could not hold him. He rose, bringing deliverance and salvation to mankind. And all our sins were laid upon him. And the blood shed on Calvary is by means that we are washed and we sing, we are washed in the blood of the Lamb. We thank you, Lord. Thank you that we have nothing to offer that would make us right with God. That Jesus paid it all unconditional love he loved the world of sinners lost he came to seek and save the lost and Lord we realise when we look at our lives that we have no hope but in Christ Jesus so we thank you thank you that you have blessed us Lord Your word is for everybody. The word of salvation is to all mankind. Because, Lord, you desire mercy and not sacrifice. You show us a merciful God that we have. One who is merciful. And he loves to show mercy. He's kind and compassionate. Now, Lord, we must come to Jesus as we are. Come to the cross. And say, Lord, forgive us our sins. And wash us in the blood of the Lamb. We thank you, Lord. 
Help us to worship you in spirit and in truth this morning as we sing our hymns and look into your word. We pray, Lord, that you will bless your people. Wherever they may be, it doesn't matter. All around the world, there is continuous praise. Continuous praise. Lord, thank you. Well, let's uh, sing our next hymn. Um, whichever one it is. Roger knows. My hope is built on nothing less. Well done. You see these are old ones, don't you? You might recognise some of these. <laughs> nothing wrong with the new one. I just like the old one. him to put up there, we're not going to sing it, but I woke up this morning singing this hymn, it's an oldie, I often wake up in the mornings singing a hymn, hmm. 
interesting one. There's so many of you know that one. Dear old Roger, well done, Roger. Yeah, we're old, Roger, and we've been around a little while. We're well old, yeah. <laughs> we're well old. Yeah, look at that. I don't know why God's wondrous grace to me he has made known, nor why unworthy Christ in love redeemed me for his own. Moving on, right? But I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. I know not how this saving faith to me he did impart, nor how believing in his word brought peace within my heart. But I know whom I have believed, and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. I know not how the Spirit moves, convincing men of sin, revealing Jesus through the word, creating faith in him. But I know whom I have believed, and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against this, that day. I know not what of good or ill may be reserved for me, I have weary ways or golden days before his face I see. I know not when my Lord may come, at night or noonday fair, nor if I walk the vale with him or meet him in the air. Yes, I know whom I believe and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I committed unto him against that day. Lovely hymn. We used to sing it years ago. And it's good to remind ourselves why I woke up singing that this morning, I don't know. But I did. I did. Can we have our Bible reading, Roger? Which is uh, 1 Corinthians. And... Um, it's in 1 Corinthians, if you've got your Bibles, that's great. If not, follow along. <clears throat> okay, that's <coughs> right. Uh, Paul, called by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus and our brother Sosthenes, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those sanctified by Christ Jesus, called to be saints together with all those who in every place call upon the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for your for you because of the grace that was given you to, in Christ Jesus that in every way you were enriched in him in all speech and knowledge even as the testimony about Christ was confirmed among you so that you are not lacking in any gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same judgment, for it has been prepared to me by, it has been reported to me, glasses problem again, uh, that there is a quarrelling among you, my brothers. What I mean is that each of one of you says, um, well, I'll follow Paul, or I follow Paulus, or I follow Cephas, or I follow Christ. Is Christ divided? Was crucified for you. Was Christ crucified for you? Or were you baptised in the name of Paul? I thank that I baptised none of you except Christmas and Gaius, so that no one may say that you were baptised in my name. I did baptise also the house of Stephanus. 
Beyond that, I don't know whether I baptised anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptise, but to preach the gospel, and not with words of eloquent wisdom, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved it is the power of God, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discern of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom. But please God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and uh, Greeks seek wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and folly to Gentiles, but to God. For that, sorry, but for those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For consider your calling, brothers. Not many of you were wise according to worldly standards. Not many were powerful, not many were of noble birth, but God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the world. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, even things that are not, to bring nothing, uh, to, uh, to bring nothing things that are, so that no human being might boast in the presence of God, and because of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God, righteousness and sanctification and redemption, so that, as it is written, let, us, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. Just a few more. And when I came to you, brothers, did not I come proclaim to you the testimony of God, with lofty speech, for I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling, and my speech and my message was not in plausible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, so that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Such a lovely scripture this morning. Uh, and I'm astounded at, 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 at the scriptures, some of them, where Paul talks and he, and he, and he says, yeah, it's nothing, nothing to do with your gifts, nothing to do with what you are, but he says it's all of Christ. And he finishes, I, I, I've always loved his last few words where he says, look, Christ has become wisdom from God, righteousness and sanctification and redemption, so that as it is written, let no one who boasts, let one who boasts only, only boasts in the Lord. That's all you have to boast in. Bring Christ to the forefront of whatever your thinking is. Paul says, I, you know, I, I know, Paul says, I know lots of things. I was brought up uh, on the feet of Gamaliel, or, you know, one of the greatest uh, le learners of the law, and he, and he could have gone through all the 613 laws that we're all supposed to remember. If you're under the law, aren't you glad you're not under the law? I can't remember the 10, let alone the 613. God, what a wonderful thing it is. And so many people, they think they're still under the law. And if they keep the law, and then Paul says, don't you know what the law says? The law, what was the law there for? The law was there to bring you to Christ. From the Old Testament, push you forward to Christ. That's where we go to Christ, the foot of the cross where we can have our sins forgiven. 
and marvellous. What a wonderful thing it is. We sung it this morning. Wonderful thing. Let's all share in a prayer this morning. If you feel like praying, then please do. Uh, I'll finish uh, with a prayer. And um, let's just uh, come before the Lord. If you've got anything on your mind, if you've got family problems or anything like that, or your your anything, anything you're worried about, bring it to the Lord in prayer. Take care of Kirsty during this difficult time. She's going through the going through it at the moment, but I'll always mm. be there for her. Take care of Kirsty in your heavenly name. Amen. 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 Lord, I'll bring Andy and Kirsty to you, Lord. Mm. I just pray, Lord, that they feel your Holy Spirit, your arms around them, Lord. I just pray for them both in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm. Amen. Amen. Please be with Peter and Janet this week as they're in the Isle of Wight. Pray for them and their family. We pray, dear Lord, that their colds have gone now. Amen. Amen. Thank you, God, that you died for us and for our sins, and we're so glad that you raised from dead, conquered mm. death. Mm made it possible for us to come with you into God's presence. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, we thank you that you are the rock that we can build our lives on. Mm. All other ground is sinking sand. And yet you are faithful. You are faithful to all your promises in the word. You are faithful um, to, to all those you love you love everyone Lord and not everyone knows you mm. help us Lord to uh, change that in a little way for you mm. we thank you Lord that um, <coughs> and Penny are with us this morning we thank you for bringing mm. them through very difficult times Lord and uh, we know that when we go through difficult times, whatever, in whatever way, we can trust you because you are faithful and we are so grateful for your love, Lord. Amen. 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 choice that you made, you gave yourself to die on the cross, mm -hmm. and you yourself conquered death by choosing to rise. Lord, and the only reason that you did this was for us. If it hadn't been to save us, to bring us back into a relationship with our Heavenly Father, it wouldn't have been necessary. But Lord, you chose to do that, and you did it for us. You did it for me. Lord, you know me by name. You know each of us by name, mm -hmm. and you call us today to be yours. Lord, we just praise you today that you that you did this amazing act that I don't think any of us could even contemplate going through the pain and the, the trauma and the mm -hmm. sacrifice that you did, Lord. Mm -hmm. We praise you today on Easter Day that you were risen from the dead mm -hmm. and that you are still alive. You are alive living at the right hand of God and calling us to be yours. So I praise you for this today in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord, we thank you that we are able to bring our petition to you this morning. We thank you, Lord, that those who have prayed that you will hear their prayers and Heal our land and heal our families. Lord, just be all in all to each one of us. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you so much. <coughs> it says in the word that we should give thanks always and pray always without ceasing. Uh, let's sing, um, was it uh, David before the throne of God? I, is it 9 7? Nine seven, yep. 
before the throne of God I stand. Another lovely hymn, meaningful hymn. Satan tempts me to despair and tells me of the guilt within. Upward I look and see him there, who made an end to all my sin. Because the sinless Savior died, my sinful soul is counted free. Satisfied to look on him and pardon me, to look on him and pardon me. Behold him there, the risen lamb, my perfect spotless righteousness, the great unchanged. Savior and my God, with Christ my Savior and my God. One with Himself I cannot die. My soul is purchased by His blood. My life is hid with Christ on high. With Christ my Savior and my God. With Christ my Savior and my Well, it's only right that our thoughts this morning should be on the risen Saviour and uh, Paul's ministry uh, to the church at Corinth uh, when he preached uh, Christ and him crucified. I, he said, I know nothing except Christ and him. When I came to you, it was Christ and him crucified. Crucify. It's strange that we don't. I don't know. I don't, I don't know how many people have used that uh, verse. I can't remember. But this was Paul's message to the church at Corinth. The church at Corinth weren't uh, a perfect church. Nothing changes, does it? Nothing changes. They weren't a perfect church. But he loved them. And um, although he had some harsh things to say to them uh, because he wanted them to grow in Christ Jesus and uh, not to uh, fight amongst themselves, which is what they were doing. They were fighting amongst themselves, following preachers rather than Christ. It, it, this has it's been the same all the way down through the centuries that uh, people uh, follow uh, preachers 
rather than Christ. Uh, some of these, you have to remember that the oratory, that is the speaking, was a Greek thing. Uh, they used to, you know, stand up and, and speak wonderful words. Uh, but you had to be careful. You speak wonderful words. Uh, people admire the, the speech rather than Christ. And, and that's how, what was happening. And they became uh, followers of men rather than followers of Christ. Um, and he had to tell him that look, when I come to you, he says, I don't speak like that. My words are very basic, but it's the truth. And he says, that's what you'll get from the Apostle Paul. And he desired that all men might be saved, the same as Jesus, you know, we often muse over the scriptures and, and, and look at the scriptures and say, oh yeah, but Christ only came for the elect. Uh, and, and in that, then we come, it becomes a bit difficult because we realise, of course, that he came to seek and to save the lost. And then all are lost. We are all lost. Well, well we were lost, but we've been found. That's the wonderful thing about it. We were lost, but we've been found. And God calls us. He calls us with the cords of love. So he says the scriptures. You know, when a boat used to come into, um, I'm going back to, uh, have you watched Master and Commander? Master, yeah. Uh, the film about them. Um, when we, we seem to be continually at war with the Spanish and the galleons, used to, fighting galleons used to go out and uh, uh, find the Spanish ships and blow them up and fight and, and get all the gold off of them. But uh, in the journeys, which were pretty harsh to be a sailor in those days, you didn't know uh, creature comforts, as it were, but in that travelling, they would lose men. Men would fall overboard, unable to... Men would get hurt uh, in the battles, and these ships after the battles would limp back to port, and they would be minus maybe 10 or 15 or 20 men. It took a lot of men to uh, work a ship, a galleon, a wharf, a fighting galleon. So... When I read that God calls me with the cords of love, he shows me how he loves me. He says, look, look at my hands. Do you see that? The nail prints in my hands and my feet, the wound in my side. Look what I did for you. But the cords of love, what a difference it is than being constricted gripped into a battleship because lots of men didn't come willingly and very often uh, the biggest guys off the boat before the ship was to sail the next day they would go ashore and grab all the big men that they could ply them with drink and they would drag them off to the boat and when they come round in the morning they found that they was at sea that's not love, is it? That's not being drawn by love. What did they call them? I can't remember what they call them now. Press gangs. Press gangs, that's the one. I've got it written down here somewhere. Press gangs. Press gangs. We weren't press ganged into God's kingdom. We were drawn. When we see Christ on the cross, suffering for our sakes, what a wonderful thing that is. And he did it, that he might have a people unto himself. Wonderful thing. Wonderful thing. We could say, well, we've done lots of good things in our lives. We've been on pilgrimages. When we were down in Spain, we were stopping on a farm. And that farm, next to that farm, 
there was a pilgrimage route from down there to up there, I'll remember it in a minute, and people used to trudge that pilgrimage route. And every, on their journey, on these Caminos, which was the, the, the they also used to drive cattle up them tracks as well. But they, on their journeys to, I'll think about it again in a minute, uh, Compostela, it's right up there, that's the one, that's the one, that's the one, thank you. It's the one, it's up there in the top. And uh, on their journeys, they, you can if you want to, you don't have to, but you can call in at certain places and you can get a piece of paper, which is a certificate that you've done this route, you've done this pilgrimage. So on your journey, you collect all these bits of paper, all these certificates. And then at the end, you can take them home, put them all together in a box and say, I've done that, that pilgrimage. Don't get you anywhere nearer Christ at all. Doesn't get you anywhere nearer. Pilgrimage do not, do not lead you to the foot of the cross. They lead you to a vast monastery with all its gold. Actually, I don't know that one. I, do you know that one? Whether that's inladen with... Uh, um, it's, a cathedral. it's a cathedral. It's a cathedral, that's right. That's it's a cathedral. It. Um, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Because uh, St. James, St. St. James is supposed to have been, yeah, buried there, yeah. But it's an arduous task going there, I can tell you that, because we were there in May and it was getting hot. And you don't do it in July and August, it's one of those walks. So if you walkers ever want to uh, uh, go on a pilgrimage, but you don't go on a pilgrimage so that you can hold the certificate up and say, look, this is my entrance into heaven. You're not going to get there that way. That's not the way. Christ has made a way. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Another thing that used to happen in Syria was there were uh, um, people who, believe it or not, used to build pillars. And they used to go and sit on these pillars in all weathers, Night and day, they would stand up where they could or they would sit down when they'd had enough and people would come to them and they were, what they were doing was they were seeking God. But they were doing it on top of a pillar. Or you may go to a monastery. There's, there's monasteries on top of mountain tops, and they were supposed that this was getting closer to God. My friend, the only way to get closer to God is on your knees. That's the only way. So Paul says, we preach Christ crucified. You know, sometimes um, uh, Paul had to uh, tackle the teachings of, the, uh, of, of uh, others that were coming into the church. People were coming into the church and... Uh, coming in amongst the church and saying, well, you, there's things you've got to do. You, can't, you just can't believe on Jesus. That, that's not enough. What you need to do is to become a Jew. You have to abide by the rules. You have to abide by this rule. You don't have to... You must stop eating that. You must stop drinking that. These are man-made rules, of course. And they were coming into the church and Paul had to... And it says that even Barnabas was led astray. Even Barnabas was led astray. You know, Barnabas was a pretty good uh, theologian. Um, but he was led astray. And that's what happens when people come into the church with... Uh, I know that I had, them in, I had it, same trouble at Newark and... Uh, and it didn't matter what I say, it didn't count for much. And even though I said, well, you know, this is what it says, uh, I was uh, 
banging my head against a brick wall. And uh, Paul was, sometimes Paul had to stand up uh, and say, you know, that's wrong. That's wrong. You're leading the people astray and you're teaching things contrary to scripture. So, Jesus took all my sins and my sorrows and he made them his very own. <sighs> so, we have to be careful. We need to stick, skip, <laughs> stick to scripture and uh, make sure that uh, what we are reading and hearing is the word of God. Paul's desire was that I may know him and the power of his resurrection uh, to be washed in the blood of the Lamb. That's what it all accounts for. We used to sing a hymn, Are you, are, are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Do you remember the story of Joshua in, in, in Zechariah where um, he had to have his dirty clothes taken off of him in Zechariah? He was wearing dirty clothes, the priest. He got contaminated and it, it, he needed it to, to be taken off. But he didn't take it off himself. The angels and the, and the people that were standing with him uh, took him off. He didn't take him off. And he was given clean clothes. And a wonderful thing it is to be cleansed in the blood of the Lamb. Hmm. So Christ came seeking for me, seeking for me all my transgressions. The sacrifices of the Old Testament could never take away the sin of the world. They were just temporary. Lambs are slain every day. I read that there was a... Uh, somebody put it down in writing. How many lambs were slain to take away people's sin? Christ has suffered that we might go free. The other thing that amazes me is that he was challenged to come down from the cross. If he had done, we would still be in our sins. We would still be without hope. Jesus said, I lay down my life. He laid it down that we might live. Interestingly, uh, about uh, when um, Peter put up that, um, uh, that story about the cross with uh, Alistair Begg. Alistair Begg is a great teacher. Um, and uh, if you've, you can get Alistair Begg up on your computer or your tablet or whatever, and uh, it, it's great uh, to listen to him. And, you know, we may know many things. We may have an all understanding of Scripture. But the danger is, when we know that, is that so many people love to debate it. And sometimes we get into heated arguments about those things which are well, we could push them to one side. And it's only if, if the things that are said are contrary to Scripture. Sometimes we have opinions. If I spoke to the brethren, the strict brethren, the Baptists, strict Baptists, even the other people, Quakers, if I spoke to Quakers, um, we might have a difference of opinion. And so often a difference of opinion starts all sorts of things. And this is what Paul was saying when he was talking to the church of Corinth 
He said, there are some things which are important, there are some things which are not. And if you're not careful, you become followers of men. And that's the danger. Always looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and sits at the right hand of God, making intercession for his people. A wonderful thing. For his people. And I no doubt Satan is there as well, not so far away saying, but what about last week? When that person cut you up in your car, you went, Ugh! What about that, that grumbling word you said? You see, we all sin slightly. We're not perfect. We get need to know that we're not perfect. We're not perfect. We never can be perfect. We have to wait until that day when we shall be resurrected and in the presence of Jesus. Then we shall be perfect. So when Satan tempts me to despair, which he will do, he'll try his hardest for you to get you to lay low and in despair, and he will get you depressed if you allow him. So we should look to Jesus, <coughs> the author and finisher of our faith. Which one are we going to sing last then, Roger? Uh, Derek? Uh, John? Harry? Fred? <laughs> in Christ alone. My hope is found. <coughs>
Amen. Let's close the prayer. Thank you, Father, for our time spent together this morning. We thank you, Lord, that we can stand in the power of Christ and not of ourselves. And as we uh, look unto Jesus, just keep looking unto Jesus. Whatever the storms may assail us, or ever, whether we're downcast, Lord, let us lift up our eyes and look to Jesus. We thank you, Lord, depart, as we depart one from another. And Lord, uh, bless us, we pray, and keep us in the love of God. Amen. Amen. Amen.